So uh, my, my point on this whole trade thing is we, you know, from uh, we had a we had an interesting Fourth of July. My my uh, my brother, John, and his wife and their son are visiting or were visiting. They, they flew out today uh, for the fourth. And uh, we uh, yesterday, yesterday, the day before yesterday. Uh, yeah, Sunday. We took the Spirit of Mount Vernon cruise, which is just a basically it's just a boat that goes a mile and a half down or an hour and a half down the Potomac to uh, Mount Vernon and uh, visited uh, the concentration camp that George Washington used to run at Mount Vernon. And uh, which was fascinating. I, you know, I've been to Monticello. I've been to Jefferson's place and I was surprised by how small it was, frankly, how how basically kind of modest his house was. Um, not so much so with George Washington. It was a, a much bigger and fancier place. And uh, as many as uh, 300 slaves at one point in time. I mean, this, this, this was a major concentration camp. And, and it, was, it was interesting to me how, you know, what it got me thinking about was how you create wealth. Because Washington was actually doing that. To a, to a large extent. I mean, George Washington was quite the entrepreneur um, compared with Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson basically just grew things. But uh, Washington was, they, they were making iron products there. Uh, you know, he had a blacksmith shop. I mean, they did it at Jefferson's place too, but um, not, not to the extent that Washington was. And he, he owned a major distillery. He was making whiskey. And uh, uh, he, I mean, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, and it, and it and it struck me, what is wealth? And how do we create it? And this is a conversation that, I mean, this is kind of basic economics that most Americans, you know, never, never studied in school, tragically, and don't understand. And I was really getting as I was, you know, as I was walking around that plantation, I was, I was like, OK, what? You know, how did how did he get all this stuff? How did he build all these buildings? How, you know, wh how did he have this lifestyle? Well, first of all, he had it through the exploitation of slave labor. In fact, fr from everything I know uh, or everything I've read, um, the economy of the South simply wouldn't have worked, or it would have worked far more modestly had there not been slave labor. So that was the principal source of it. But the but the other thing is, you know, the or, or that represented the wealth of of Washington and many of his contemporaries. But the other thing was, wealth is. A nation's wealth, you know, Adam Smith, he, in 1776, he wrote this book, The Wealth of Nations. And the wealth of a nation is the consequence not of its economic activity necessarily. You know, I mean, you, we can have a, like a simple economy, and I've used this example a million times to describe, you know, a so-called free market where I mow your lawn every week and you wash my car every week, right? Every weekend. And... That is, in theory, a pure free market, because you and I are just contracting with each other to do that. But what happens if, while washing your car, I break your window and then refuse to pay for it? Well, then you have to go to court, right? Which now we're talking about, it's not free trade anymore. Now it's regulated trade, because there are rules. Right? So, but, but I, I'm digressing slightly here. The point is that if I wash your car and you mow my lawn or vice versa uh, every weekend, we're not creating anything of wealth. We're moving money around. We've got what looks like a GDP happening here, but we're not creating wealth. So how do you create wealth? You convert raw materials into finished goods that represent greater value so that pile of dirt which is filled with iron ore, becomes a, an anvil or a bunch of horseshoes eventually. And so that represents now wealth, the anvil, the horseshoes, you know, making, making the steel, making the iron and making the steel and then, you know, shaping it. 
So it's the application of human labor to raw materials that creates wealth. And which is a fancy way of saying manufacturing creates wealth. And that was, I, I, I just couldn't stop thinking about that all the time I was walking around uh, Mount Vernon with my family. Um, uh, that the human labor that was being applied, first of all, was enslaved labor. And, you know, thus all this wealth was being created, not by George Washington, but by his slaves. A. And B, setting aside, well, you can't really set aside slavery, but, but you know, in addition to that argument, the George Washington got it that manufacturing is what creates wealth. He understood that. And that's why he had Alexander Hamilton come up with his 11 point plan for American manufacturing. So even that part of the country, the northern part of the country that was not operating on slave labor could become a, an industrial powerhouse, which we did. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the watch more videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy dandy subscribe button. So you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.